Hello everyone, welcome to the Codeverse. In this video, we will be exploring the world of object-oriented programming. We will be learning about what is object-oriented programming, why we use it, what is class, what is object. On internet, you may see some very complex definition of object-oriented programming, that is OOP. Because of which, you may think that uh, OOP is a very complex phenomenon, but it's not. In fact, OOP is invented to solve complex real-life problems in a simple ways. In OOP, everything is object. Every real-world entity is called as object and its structure is called as classes. If you look around yourself, everything is object. Example, Ferrari and BMW are object of a class car. Laptops and mobiles are object of a class machine. OOP maps the real-world entities to our program. Still confused? Let's consider a real-life problem. Suppose we want to create a program which will keep all the data of persons present in India. So, if we try to solve it using normal programming language, it will become very complex. Let us see how we can use object-oriented programming over here. Before storing a data, let's think about property of a person. Example, person has a name, age, gender. Each, perf each person performs some actions like eating, walking, sleeping, etc. Structure used to store these properties and function is called as class. Now, we have a class person which gives us a guideline that every person should have properties and perform some functions. Real world entities of a class is called as object. Let's consider a real life person with name Ben. Ben is a 21 year boy. Consider another person with name Emma. Emma is 18 year old girl. So in this way, we can create infinite number of objects of a class person. Ben and Emma are the real world example of a class. So they are object. In this way, we can map our real world problems with the programming concepts. Always remember, aim for using object-oriented programming is to solve complex real-life problem in a simple way. So, from next video, we will start to explore the world of object-oriented programming with some simple examples. If you like this video, then please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friend. See you in the next video. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Codeverse. In this video, we will be exploring about functions. We will be learning what is function, why we use function, syntax of function with a simple example. So what is function? Function is a group of statement combined together which is used to simplify the logic of program and reduce the lines of a code. Let's see how functions can simplify the program. Consider a program where we want to find out if number is even or odd and we want to check it in four different places in a program. Normally if we don't know the concept of function then we will write a logic for even odd program in four different places. If you see this code, then we are repeating a lots of line of code, which is complicating a program. We can reduce the number of line of code using function. In this program, we are setting a boolean variable called answer to true. If number is even or if number is odd, then we are setting it to false. If you want to understand this logic for even odd program, then please check out my video on it. Let's see how we can use a function over here. As I said, function is a group of statement which will execute only when we call it. So we will just wrap the code or a logic for even odd program in a function and call it in the four different places in our program. It will reduce a line of code and simplify our logic. Let's see the syntax of function. First, we have a return type of function. Return type gives information about what function will return. Function can return integer, string, boolean or other variables also. In our problem, if number is even, then we will return true. If number is odd, then we will return false. So return type of our function is boolean. After return type, next word is name of a function. We will give function name as is even. After name, we will have parenthesis, which contains the parameter of function. Parameter is also called as input to the function. We will be giving input as an integer number for checking if the number is even or odd. After parenthesis, we have to write logic for even odd program in curly brackets. 
So modulo operator is used to find a reminder of a function. If number modulo 2 is true, that means reminder is 0. Then we know that our number is even. In that case, we will return true. Otherwise, number is odd, so we will return false. So our function for checking if number is even or odd is ready. Now in our program, we will replace the code logic for even odd program with our function. That's how we use function in our program for reducing lines of a code and simplify the logic of a program. So that's it for today's video. If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Codeverse. In last video, we have learned about class, object and functions. In today's video, we will be learning about what is constructor, why we use it, real life example of constructor. Also, we will see the syntax of class, object and constructor. So what is constructor? Constructor is a special function which is used to initialize object of a class. Consider a class person. When we want to add new person to our system, then we have to create object of it and we have to do some manual activities like giving name, adding gender, etc. Every time when new human object is created, we have to repeat these activities. Here constructor comes in a picture. Instead of doing all this activity manually, we can use a special type of function called constructor. Constructor will initialize all of this variable for us. Constructor will automatically get invoked when we initialize the object. Let's see some properties of constructor. Constructor is a special function, so it has some special properties like name of constructor is always same as a class name. Constructor doesn't have any return type. Constructor automatically gets invoked when object is created. There are total three types of constructor. First is a default constructor, second is a parameterized constructor and third is a copy constructor. Let's see the syntax of a class, object and constructor. First, let's define a class. First comes class keyword followed by name of a class which is person in our example. And after it in curly bracket we have to define member variables and member function for a class. In our case member variables are name, age and gender. We have given access specifier as public. Soon I will be making a separate video on it, but for now consider public means we can access this variable outside class also. When new human objects get created, then we have to initialize these variables. For doing it, we will take their name, gender as a parameter or as an input to the constructor. Constructor doesn't have a return type and its name is same as a class name. So we will directly define it as a class name and parameters in parenthesis. In our case, class name is a person and we will be taking two parameters first is the actual name and second is actual gender and then we will initialize it to our member variables and then we will create a getter and setter method for variables gender and name. Now let's create object of a class person in a main function. Syntax for creating object is same as a syntax for creating a variable. First we have to define a return type of object since this object belongs to class person then its return type will be person and let's give it a name as a p1. So our syntax will become person p1. Now initialize the object using constructor and pass parameter as a name and gender. So our syntax become person p1 is equal to person and parameters as name and gender. So for now we will take name as a Adam and gender as a male. Similarly, we will create a second object also which is which we will name as a p2 and pass the parameter as eu and gender female now if we try to print p1 dot name then answer will be adam and if we try to print p2 dot name then answer will be eu and same thing for gender always remember if we are passing parameter to the constructor then it is called as parameterized constructor and if we are not passing any parameter, then it's called as a default constructor. You can see examples of it on your screen. That's all for today's video. Soon I will be starting new video series called Java in Animated Way. So if you are interested, then please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Codeverse. In this video, we will be learning about inheritance in C++. Most of the object oriented concepts are taken from real life. So. What is inheritance in real life? Consider a Mukesh Ambani. He built Reliance industry from scratch. He put 
his lot of efforts and money in building his business. Now he has a son. His son don't need to work from a scratch to build his business. He can directly inherit his father's business. It will save his lot of money as well as efforts. This concept which allows us to inherit property, business, wealth of our fathers without efforts is called as inheritance. This same concept used in C++ and other object oriented programming languages. For example, consider a class cars. We have defined wheels method in our class which will print car has 4 wheels. If we are creating a child class called BMW which will inherit the cars class then we don't need to rewrite the wheels method. We can directly reuse that method. We don't need to define this method again in our child class. Consider object of a class BMW. If we call wheels method using BMW object then it will print car has 4 wheels. Inheritance allows us to reuse our code. Now let's see the syntax. First we will define a class cars which has wheels method. Now while defining a child class we have to tell C++ compiler that this is a child class. First comes a keyword and then name of a class which is BMW in our case. Then we use assignment operator. After that visibility which can be public or private. And then name of a parent class which we use for inheriting. Rest of the code of a class like a member variables such as model number and functions such as print model number will stay as it is. Now let's create object of our BMW class in main method. If you remember we have not defined wheel methods in our BMW class. But if we call that wheels method using BMW class object then we will get output as cars has 4 wheels. In this way we can reuse a code of parent class using inheritance. In next video we will learn types of inheritance. If you like this video then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hello everyone welcome to the Codeverse. In this video we will learn about types of inheritance. There are 5 types of inheritance. Single inheritance, multiple inheritance, hybrid inheritance, multilevel inheritance and hierarchical inheritance. First type is single inheritance. This is the simplest form of inheritance. Here we have one parent class and one child class. Properties of parent class can be used by child class. It's a normal inheritance that we have seen in our last video. Second inheritance is a multi-level inheritance. In this type we have a child class of a child class. Means we can go up to n levels of a child class. In this type parent class properties can be used by child class as well as the grandchild class. For example consider a parent class animal having function called eating. We have create one child class called dogs which will inherit animal class. In dog class we have a function called bark. Now child class can access the function of a parent class. We will again create one child class called baby dog class which will inherit its property from a dog class. Now baby dog class can use the function of both animal class as well as the dogs class that is he can use both the method which is eating as well as bark. Next type of inheritance is a multiple inheritance. In this type child class inherit its property from multiple parents. If class is inheriting its property from one or more parent then child class can access property of both the parents. Consider a parent class A with the method print A and second parent class B with the method print B. Now we will create a child class called C. C can access both the methods of a parent class which is print A and print B. If we want to inherit child class from multiple parent then we just need to add visibility and parent name separated by comma. You can see the syntax on the screen. Next type of inheritance is hierarchical inheritance. In this type one parent class can have multiple child class. Every child class can access the property of parent class. You can see in the diagram class B, C, D are child classes of class A. All the child classes can access the properties of parent class A. You can see the syntax on your screen. In this example we are inheriting three child classes from one parent class which is A. Next inheritance is a hybrid inheritance. It is a combination of one or more type of inheritance. Consider this diagram. You can clearly see that this type of inheritance is a combination of a multi-level and hierarchical inheritance. You can see the syntax on the screen. 
in this example class a has a two child so it's a type of hierarchical inheritance and class d has two parents which are b and c so class d can access property of all the parents classes which is a b c that's it for today's video i hope you understood the concept of inheritance if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching everyone welcome to the codeverse in this video we will be learning about polymorphism the word polymorphism is a combination of two different words that is poly and morphism poly means multiple and morphism means form so polymorphism in object oriented programming means one function or one operator can have multiple forms consider a real life example of a person called bob bob is a software developer bob also creates a video means bob is youtuber bob is also a husband of beautiful wife so bob is just a one person who has to play three different roles that is he has three different forms so we can say that bob's works is type of a polymorphism same concept we can use in object oriented programming we can implement the polymorphism in three different ways first is a method overloading it's also called as function overloading second is a method overriding is also called as function overriding and third is operator overloading in this video we will learn about method overloading method overloading is a type of polymorphism which allows us to create different functions with the same name consider a program where i want to add two integer then i will create a function called add which will take two integers as a parameter and i will return the addition of it at the next step of program i want to add float numbers so i can create the method with the same name that is add which will take two float numbers as a parameter and return its addition when we call the function if we pass integer as a parameter then compiler will call the first function if we pass float as a parameter then compiler will call second function so we can create two or more function with the same name this is called as method overloading so we can say that one function can have multiple forms so it is a type of polymorphism in next video we will learn about method overriding if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel Hello everyone thank you so Welcome much for watching course. in this video we will learn about the difference between method overloading and method overriding in previous video we have learned that when we create two or more methods or functions with the same name in one class then it is called as method overloading it helps to increase the readability of a program it is compile time polymorphism means compiler will decide which method to call while compiling the code if you want to learn more you can check out my video for it so what is method overriding we have learned that method overloading means creating two or more function with the same name in a same class but if we are creating two or more method with the same name in parent and child class that is in two different classes then it is called as method overriding method overriding is used to provide specific implementation of that function or method consider a real life example of a bank each bank has a separate rate of interest like sbi has 8% rate of interest hdfc has 6% rate of interest and other bank has 7% rate of interest so for implementing this example we need to create a parent class bank which will has the rate of interest method and that method will print the rate of interest of that bank now we will inherit our first child class called sbi rate of interest of sbi is 8% so our method rate of interest will print the rate of interest is 8% now we will create a second child class called hdfc so our method in this child class will print rate of interest is 6% that means we have provided the specific implementation of our method in a child class this concept which allows us to create the methods with the same name in parent and child class is called as a method overriding now let's summarize this video method overloading means creating two or more methods with the same name in a same class method overriding means creating a methods with the same name in a parent and child class method overloading is used to increase the readability of a program method overriding is used to provide the specific implementation of that method that's it for today's video if you like this video then please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching